Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful <clears throat> midwinter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this gorgeous. We have now made it to Thursday, <coughs> January 21st, 2021. Uh, miraculously avoiding civil war in Mad Max for for at least one day oh yes I am Sam Mitchell and this is Collapse Chronicles and I want to thank I believe it was brother Tom for alert listener Tom sending me this article from uh well, this is kind of a spoiler alert. I, I'm, I'm going to turn this into a two-part video. This is an article showing up, of all places, the World Economic Forum's website. Yes, the World Economic Forum. You know, the Davos boys, the, that gang of billionaires over there in Davos, Switzerland, who together have probably... It done more to destroy this planet than any single group of individuals. Maybe the their only competition would be the United Nations. So you understand who we're getting ready to hear from are the architects of the collapse of a planet. And so what I'm going to do in part one of this video, I'm simply going to read <clears throat> this uh, this article. I'm just going to read it straightforward. I will try not to break into it. Uh, and then I'm going to break this uh, video in two. After I read the article in part one, I'm going to break and come back in part two. And we're going to talk about, I guess, Marshall McLuhan uh, and his cryptic was it a prophecy that the medium is the message? So the message, of course, is important here, but we're going to come back in part two and talk about why would the World Economic Forum uh, send out this article to the planet here no uh, accident that this article uh, showing up right when uh, Joe Biden was taking over the reins uh, at the White House. But we'll come back and talk about this. First off, let's just hear the article, uh, I guess with not a trace of irony, from the World Economic Forum. <clears throat> Climate change will be sudden and cataclysmic sudden and cataclysmic. We need to act fast. Yes, we do. All right. First, we have the three takeaways. This is written uh, by Peter Geiger, the group chief risk officer from the Zurich Insurance Group, written the afternoon before uh, Joe Biden taking over uh, the White House. Here are the three takeaways. Yes, first they let us know this article is part of the Davos Agenda. The Davos Agenda, which is really going to be the what we're going to be talking about in the second part of this uh, rant. Okay. <clears throat> Takeaway number one tipping points could fundamentally disrupt the planet and produce abrupt change in the climate. T takeaway number two, a mass methane release could put us on an irreversible path to full land ice melt, causing sea levels to rise by up to 30 meters, otherwise known as 100 feet. Takeaway number three, we must take immediate action to reduce global warming and build resilience with these tipping points 
in mind. Okay, with those three uh, bullets fired off, let's get into the body of the article. <clears throat> the speed and scale of the response to the corona panic. I knew the C word. I had to. I, I didn't realize. I forgot that the C word got in here so uh, early. The speed and scale of the response to the corona panic by governments, businesses, and individuals seems to provide hope. Yes, that we can react to the climate change crisis in a similarly decisive manner. But history tells us that humans do not react to slow moving and distance threats. Our evolution has selected the fight or flight instinct to deal with environmental change. So rather like the metaphor of the, ba of the frog in boiling water, we, need, we tend to react too little and too late to gradual change. And guys, obviously, if you are a doomer who's been down this rabbit hole for more than about 10 minutes, there's, th this is going to be pretty much uh, nursery school, Doomer 101 for dummies, okay, because this article was written uh, not for doomers, but for the clueless morons, but we'll get back to that in part two. Getting back to the article... <coughs> Climate change is often described as global warming, with the implication of gradual changes caused by a steady increase in temperatures from heat waves to melting glaciers. <clears throat> but we know from multidisciplinary scientific evidence, from geology, anthropology, and archaeology, that climate change is not incremental. Even in pre-human times, it is episodic when it is not forced by a human-induced acceleration of greenhouse gas emissions and warming. <clears throat> there are parts of our planet's carbon cycle, the ways that the Earth and the biosphere store and release carbon, that could trigger suddenly in response to gradual warming. <clears throat> These are tipping points that, once passed, could fundamentally disrupt the planet and produce abrupt, non-linear change in the climate. <coughs> yes. <clears throat> Think of it as a game of Jenga, and the planet's climate system as the tower. <clears throat> For generations, we, meaning humans, have been slowly removing blocks, but <clears throat> at some point, we will remove a pivotal block, such as the collapse of one of the major global ocean circulation systems. For example, the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, that will cause all or part of the global climate system to fall into a planetary emergency. But worse still, it could cause runaway damage. When the tipping points form a domino-like cascade, where breaching one tipping point triggers breaches of others, creating an unstoppable shift to a radically and swiftly changing climate. <laughs> one of the most concerning tipping points is mass methane release. Methane can be found in deep freeze storage within permafrost and at the bottom of the deepest oceans in the form of methane hydrates, but rising seas and air temperatures are beginning to thaw 
these stores of methane. This would release a powerful greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, 30 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a global warming agent. This would drastically increase temperatures and rush us toward the breach of other tipping points. This could include the acceleration of ice thaw on all three of the globe's large land-based ice sheets, Greenland, West Antarctica, and the Wilkes Basin in East Antarctica. I don't know why he left out all of the glaciers of the world. The potential collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheets is seen as a key tipping point as its loss could eventually raise global sea levels by 3.3 meters with important regional variations. More than that, we would be on the irreversible path to land ice melt causing sea levels to rise by up to 30 meters, otherwise known as 100 feet, roughly at the rate of 2 meters per century, or maybe faster. Just look at the raised beaches around the world at the last high stand of global sea level at the end of the Pleistocene period about 120,000 years ago to see the evidence of such a warm, warm world, which was just 2 degrees C warmer than the present day. <clears throat> as well as devastating low-lying and coastal areas around the world, melting polar ice could set off another tipping point, a disablement of the AMOC. This circulation system drives a north northward flow of warm, salty water on the upper layers of the ocean from the tropics to the northeast Atlantic region and a southwest flow of cold water deep in the ocean. <clears throat> this ocean conveyor belt has a major effect on the climate, seasonal cycles, and temperatures in western and northern Europe. It means the region is warmer than other areas of similar latitude. But melting ice from the Greenland ice sheet could threaten the AMOC system. It would dilute the salty seawater in the North Atlantic, making the water lighter and less able or unable to sink. This would slow the engine that drives this ocean circulation. Recent research suggests the AMOC has already weakened by around 15% since the middle of the 20th century. If this continues, it could have a major impact on the climate of the Northern Hemisphere, but particularly Europe. It may even lead to the cessation of arable farming in the UK, for instance. It may also reduce rainfall over the Amazon basin, impact the monsoon systems in Asia, and by bringing warm waters into the Southern Ocean, further destabilize ice in Antarctica and accelerate global sea level rise. At what stage and at what rise in global temperatures will these tipping points be reached? No one is entirely sure. It may take centuries or millennia, or it could be imminent. But as the corona panic has taught us, we need to prepare for the expected we were aware of the risk of a pandemic. We also knew that we were not sufficiently prepared, but we did not act in a meaningful manner. 
Thankfully, we have been able to fast track the production of vaccines to combat the corona panic, but there is no vaccine for climate change once we have passed these tipping points. We need to act now on our climate. Act like these tipping points are imminent and stop thinking of climate change as a slow-moving, long-term threat that enables us to kick the problem down the road and let future generations deal with it. We must take immediate action to reduce global warming and fulfill our commitments to the Paris Agreement and build resilience with these tipping points in mind. We need to plan now to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions, but we also need to plan for the impacts, such as the ability to feed everyone on the planet, develop plans to manage flood risk, as well as manage the social and ge geopolitical impacts of human migrations that will be a consequence of flight or flight decisions. Yes. <clears throat> Breaching these tipping points would be cataclysmic and potentially far more devastating than the corona panic potentially far more devastating than the corona panic. Yes, thank you. Uh, some may not enjoy hearing these messages or consider them to be in the realm of science fiction. But if it injects a sense of urgency to make us respond to climate change like we have done to this pandemic, then we must talk more about what has happened before and will happen again. Otherwise, we will continue playing Jenga with our planet. And ultimately, there will only be one loser. Us. Thank you uh, for the most anthro- Apomorphic uh, uh, human primacy quote of the year. I, I, yes, uh, one loser. Humans, yeah, yeah, yes, humans will be the one loser when the uh, entire planet <coughs> collapses. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna stop here. Uh, and, and we're going to come back with the uh, probably the real round here in part two. We are going to uh, look at, ask the question, why would the World Economic Forum, why would this group of billionaires, these globalist billionaires, uh, the creme de la creme, uh, of the architecture of the collapse of a planet be sending out this message to the planet in the opening days of 2021 as Joe Biden takes over the reins and we rejoin the, climus, the Paris Climate Agreement. So uh, I will come back to that in part two in one minute. Bye guys.